Now that we've built out our communication page and homepage for what we are going to serve as our internet, the next step in your Microsoft journey would be creating apps. And I don't mean apps in a sense of business applications or iPhone apps or Android apps or anything like that. What I mean by apps here in the SharePoint world are lists and libraries. These are pieces of data that you can use in other applications or in Microsoft SharePoint within your business to better uh, serve information, organize documents, organize information. So we're going to start up here in the top right corner. That is the gear. And so inside this gear, you're going to have the opportunity to add an app. That's the second one down. And so we're going to go ahead and click add an app. Now, after your page loads, you'll see a couple different options in which you can create. And so first off would be a document library. That would be exactly what it sounds like. That is a library or of documents. And so that is similar to your shared drive, which we'll go into here in a little bit. But these are your document storage environments. We're going to focus in on lists here for a second. And so within lists, you might get a couple different options. Yours might look a little bit different than mine, but a list is a collection of data. I like to explain it as a living Excel sheet. And it's you can create columns, you can create data points. And so we're going to choose custom list. The other options in list, if you type in list, you'll see an import from spreadsheet another type of list and so that would import an excel sheet another type of list would be this calendar and so the reason why i like to start with custom list instead of calendar is you can create any list and turn it into a calendar if if you'd like and so i'm going to go into custom list i'm going to test uh title this test Now, after creating your list, you'll be redirected to the site contents, which is where all of the information within your Microsoft SharePoint environment lives. And we can see this test list lives right here and that it is a list. And we can go ahead and hit the name. That'll open it up. And so now we see the data points in which we are collecting. Currently, it's just title. So if we were to click this new button, all it would prompt us to do is to fill out a title, but we want to include a little bit more information in this form and this data collection that we're going through. That's where this add a column comes in. And there are a couple different options in which we can add. We can do a single line of text. We can do a choice, which would be multiple choice uh, or a drop down choice. We can do date and time. We could do multiple lines of text. Person, which a person is the choice of people within your environment. So we'll actually search through your Azure Active Directory and choose an individual based on their account. And that becomes super powerful because this is where you can do filters based on people. So you could say, show me only pieces of information that is important to me. And that me could then change based on who's viewing it. So this is a super powerful one. Number yes or no, which is also a checkbox, hyperlink, currency, location, image, and then there is this more. And if we click more, it's going to open us up into a new view, which it gives us these additional choices in which we can pick. And we can pick external data, managed metadata, which is uh, we'll get into in another lesson. And then there's this lookup field which is also super uh, useful, but we'll get into lookup fields in another lesson, another course. So we're gonna choose product as the name, and then we're gonna do a choice, which again was the menu to choose from. And we can do product one, product two, and so forth. So you just hit the return, and that's how you would choose the separate lines. And now we can require that somebody put a choice for this, we could choose yes. We could enforce unique values if we wanted. Uh, that would in, that would make sure that every new piece of information is a new choice. We're gonna leave that as no. 
And then this is important information here. You display choices using a drop-down menu. That's a one-to-one. -one. Radial buttons. That's also a one-to-one. -one. And then there's check boxes, which will allow you to choose multiple selections. So you could say this is product one and three. You could also allow fill-in choices if you want. Uh, this I would caution you to doing this because that does open it up to spelling mistakes. The final area of note here is the default choice. Now, you can choose a calculated value or a specific choice for default, or you can delete this, which is what I like to do, and that will leave no default choice. There's column formatting, which we can touch on later, formulas. I wouldn't worry about any of this. Uh, those last couple don't really matter. This description, which I which I gro uh, grazed over, this will give you a little bit of detailed information. So you could say, choose the product that is most applicable. Then we can go ahead and hit OK. Now we have title and product. I'm going to do one more, and I'm going to do the person so that you can see what all that does. And I'm going to say, account manager or account rep. And then we can choose person or group, which is fine. More options, allow multiple selections if there's multiple account managers. Um, yeah, and then allow selection of groups if you wanted to assign it to a whole team. And we'll go ahead and hit save. Now we have our list created. Now when we hit this new, now we see all of the new areas in which we can start to fill out. And so let's go ahead and title this out. So let's say this is a test, this is a product one, and the account rep is, let's say, Adele. And there it is. That would assign this to Adele. Now we can also say, since we did check off the groups, we can assign this to the sales team. So if we wanted to assign this to the sales and marketing members or the sales best practices members, we can do that as well. So we could assign it to both if we wanted to. So that's pretty cool. That's how you allow groups and multiple selection. We're going to say this is only Adele Vance, and we're going to go ahead and hit Save. Now that we've added this, what we can do is, you know what, we'll add one more just to show you grouping. So we'll say uh, Test 2. And then we're going to choose product two, account rep. This time will be Ashley. And after we assign her, there she is. We can go ahead and hit save. Now that we have two different pieces of information, we can now group by information, which is super powerful. These are what's called views. And so currently you can see the only view that we have is the all items view, which would simply do exactly what you think it would. It would show all items. Now what we can do is we can group by product. So we could filter by or group by. If we wanted to filter by, we could say show only products one. We can hit apply and now we only see product one. And what we can do now is if we wanted this to be a public view where anyone can come in and see this information later, we'll go to the all items, save view as, title this product one, make this a public view, that's important. If you uncheck this, you will be the only one who can see it. So if we wanted to make sure this is a public view, we'll leave that checked and hit save. Now that we've saved this view, we see that it's changed to product one instead of all items, and now we can go back to all items very quickly. Another way that we can do this is the group by. So we, if we choose group by product, then it will create a cascading dropdown of product one and product two. See, this is based on product. And then we see how many total products are in each of those groups. This is what's called the expanded view. And then this would be what's called the collapsed view. And there you have it. That's how you're able to group. Now we can, of course, ungroup, and then it goes back to normal. Now the account rep is also important. Now I did say that you can choose to filter by, and so you can choose to filter by a specific person here. Now if you wanted it to be dynamic to be to me, I'll show you that before we jump into the next storage topic as we're getting a little bit 
into the weeds here of Microsoft SharePoint. But the way that we'll do that is we'll go up to the gear. We'll go up to list settings. Here in list settings, we'll be able to do a few different things. We'll be able to change uh, column information, add a new column. We can do version settings, advanced settings, delete this list if we want, go into permissions of the list. All of these things we'll get into in the SharePoint Power User course. They're a little bit uh, too much into the weeds for this course. But we're going to go down here to create a view. This is another way that you're able to create that view. Now I mentioned that you are able to create a calendar from a created list or from a custom list and that would be right here. We can choose calendar view if we want. We're going to go into standard view and we're going to say me view. And then we can scroll down, choose which of the columns we want to show up. Maybe we want ID to be first. ID is always populated. It's auto populated by the system. So is modified, modified by, created, and created by. So these are all auto created, auto generated by the system. It's always collected in the back end. We can sort, but we're going to look into filter. And we're going to say that account rep is equal to open bracket me close bracket. You can read that right here. So that would say me or today. So you could say anything that was created today and assigned to me if you wanted to. You can do or and and. So we're gonna scroll down. Then you can total and style things. I like to do the shaded one. It's the every other row blue. Uh, then we can do folders, show items without folders. We don't have any folders. Items, limits, mobiles, etc. Uh, we're going to just go ahead and hit OK. Now, you'll notice that nothing is here. That's because none of the information, none of these forms have been assigned to me. So we'll go ahead and hit New, and then we'll say Test Me, and then we'll say Product 3, Account Rep is Mod, which is the account that I'm using, and we'll hit save. Now it should show up that I do have one here because this is the me view and I am the current account rep, which is what everything is being filtered on. Now you'll notice that I didn't fill out created, created by, modified, or modified by, or ID, yet all of those fields got populated. ID number is three because that is the third item that has been created. Created a few seconds ago, this will update to the date and time eventually mod administrator, which is my account, modified when it was last changed a few seconds ago. Again, this is what's called friendly view date, which eventually it will turn into the date and time. And then who last changed it, which you can see is my account. Now, if we were to go back into the all items, we'll be able to see that this little, little, little lines here indicate that it's a new, a new item. But if we wanted to see the ID numbers, we can go to add columns, and then we'll go down to show and hide columns. This will bring up a similar view to what we saw under the list settings. We could say ID, use these arrows to move it up. Let's move it all the way to the front. And then we could say created, created by, modified, modified by, just to show you all of the ones that have been collected. Hit apply. And then there we have it. ID numbers are all populated modified seven minutes ago, six minutes ago, about a minute ago, who created it, who modified it. But what we really cared about in this instance for was the account rep, which if we go down to the me view, there it is. So very powerful. Lists get very, very powerful. You can do a lot with these. And then when we start getting into the power platform, lists are going to become a big part of what we do. So thanks for watching. If you have the time, please join me in the next lesson.